John Flismas, thank you so much for being here. How the hell are you? I'm good, thanks. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. I want to just dive straight into this thing that I've been wondering. You made a career out of being a comedian mm. for most of your adult life, yeah. and you no longer do that. Yeah. What created that transition for you, and what on earth are you doing now? Um, so yeah, it's interesting. So, so to spend 25 years of your adult life like doing something well, and then switch it off in mid, like you know, when it's going well, rather than waiting for it to fizzle. Um, so there are a couple of things. One is, uh, um, my dad died, and and um, and so while he was dying, because we were aware of that, um, I realized that he'd made one career, and then he he, he was going to be a great writer when he was young. He really was a very good writer, and he'd actually sold a book, which he never finished because he met my mum, and then he had a family, and then he became an entrepreneur to look after everyone. And at the end of his life, when he got back to writing, he was too tired. He just didn't have the kind of drive anymore, as you don't after a lifetime of hard work, because they worked bruisingly hard. Um, and I realized that this was like a flare going up as he died. It was like, because he never took it, he never ever mentioned that. He, I found that out separately. He never ever held us accountable for that, which I thought was generous. But um, I realized that the only way to enjoy life is to master something and then quickly switch and master something. Do as many things as you can. And so, so that was part of it. And then I've always been interested in learning. So when I thought about what to do, I thought, well, in order to learn, I need to teach. So, so that's important. But to teach, I need to learn. Let's get some qualifications. So, so I started doing that. While I was getting a master's, I started teaching. Um, and I realized that comedy wasn't helping in South Africa because a lot of comedy, and actually globally, we become these pop philosophers. And because of social media, whatever people say just becomes gospel but they're very few experts. So, so to get on stage in South Africa and talk about people having weaves or you know, being hilarious because they're colored, um, um, it, on a deep level, it's just these like tropes that reinforce the negative situation that we're in. Whereas in a classroom, you can start to genuinely break people's mindsets and you can start to build new ones. So that's what I started doing, and, and uh, I'm loving it. So I finished the master's. I'd like to start doing a doctorate. I'm going to take a year off just to like recover from the master's. But, um, but in a nutshell, yeah, that's it. Wow. And so was it hard for you to switch off this identity, in a sense, to go from, especially when you're doing something for so long, the thinking makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. Once you did it, what was that process like for you? Do you find your, did you find yourself and do you find yourself pining to be on that stage a little bit at times or run me through the journey of actually doing it? Yeah, so intellectually, yes, easy. On paper makes perfect sense, much like communism, socialism, in some instances, some religions too. Uh, emotionally, uh, it's the closest I've ever come to relapsing in 17 years of being clean and sober. The, the trauma of it, I, I, didn't, I didn't understand. Luckily, I had the trauma of a thesis to get finished, <laughs> so, <laughs> so that helped a bit. Nothing like sort of smashing your leg while you're trying to avoid pain in your arm. Um, so that was quite good. Um, I was genuinely heartbroken the night that I said cheers to the stage in Cape Town with five of my very good friends at an arena show. It was quite an emotional blow. Um, I didn't realize how needy I was from a, an attention point of view. After 25 years of comedy, you become a little numb to how, because really it's, it's pathological. It's not professional. You need to be in a room full of thousands of people, cordoned off and under your own light, like with your amplified voice. There's something wrong with you. So, <laughs> so, so, so I did, I really, I had to kind of work to integrate that feeling. But, um, but I can honestly say that um, I'm healthier now. Um, psychologically, I think I'm healthier. Uh, in that I'm, I've understood that that's a, I don't think comedy comes from the best place. Human, most art, um, great art, often it, it, there's problems uh, around the roots of it. And I didn't have a great childhood. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I did. I was privileged and white and male, so basically woke up every morning winning the lotto. But that meant that I had to grow up in an environment of wasps. And, and that's like, you know, being raised by scorpions. It's a... It's a dangerous place um, for a sort of artistic alternative human being. I mean, government school wasn't a great experience. I only hated school for the first 12 years. Um, um, I, um, I nearly failed um, high school. Um, I remember being thrown out of a school. Um, the headmaster saying I'd amount to nothing. He died, so that's good. Um, 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 
I went to drama school and I discovered freaks like me. And, and I was like, oh, where have you guys been hiding? I was like, I was being traumatized in a government school. What happened? Um, so, 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 yeah, so it has been a weird journey. And I do miss it occasionally. Um, I've considered doing another show um, um, later on when I've figured out a more healthy approach. Um, I haven't made that decision yet. So, yeah, so I, the difference between the, the thinking behind it and the emotional side are, are huge. And so... Do you think, I mean, because you alluded to it, that was kind of my question is, you do all this work yeah. to first to become aware of where maybe the comedy came from and looking back at your, your childhood and just your upbringing as a, well, your whole adult life and you get to this. So maybe there is this chance a little bit later once you've done that work that now with a new lens, you could, I don't, I don't mean go back to it full time, obviously, yeah. but do it once every while because you kind of fixed the underlying problem or at least you've worked on it yeah do you feel that you could yeah so, so i think that's it i think you've got to um it's very hard to say like okay this is off the table i mean i think that's nonsense a and i think if we did that with gender we did it with you know sexual orientation we did it with race. like if we if we just remained as fluid as possible we're probably going to have a better future so, so yes but in order to get to a place where i could make that decision i needed to close the door so I said no to lots and lots of bookings, no to like lots and lots of offers. And I just kept, and every time I said that, like it, it was a win and a lose and I kind of felt nice. that, but I think you're right. So, so it's more about getting to a place of clarity to make the next decision. That's what I found with learning is life is more about attaining levels of clarity because there's a lot of noise. Yes. whether it's in our own heads or around us, particularly on social media, you know, Umberto Eco said a great thing about, you know, um, I'm going to paraphrase it, but he basically said that like social media is a festival of idiots. And, and you know, he's a great like, you know, classical intellectual. Um, he was criticized for saying it, but I know what he means. Like it, it used to just be limited to dinner parties where with your glass of Chianti and your kind of uninformed mind, you could say whatever you wanted. But now we kind of broadcast this stuff and it yeah. becomes gospel and we actually take each other seriously in like 280 characters. It's not an essay with like references. It's just, I think, because, you know, and even with COVID, it's like, well, I've done my research. What are you talking about? You read a few websites. That's not research. Yeah. You know, you're in Woolworths. You listen to the guy behind you. That's not research. But he's like, no, I'm sure I have my rights and I believe and I think it's, it's stupidity. So. So for me, it's about being able to say something with a little more informed opinion. So, so I think you're right. That decision will come. 